Hey everyone, you're watching the On the Road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical tips along the way. I'm your host and security professional, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting October 7, 2013. This week I have to give you a very quick episode because I'm attending Gartner's IT Expo Symposium down here in Orlando, Florida. I'm speaking about a day data loss prevention and data security, and WatchGuard is also launching two new products, our data loss prevention product and our new visibility tool uh, called Dimension. So I'll make this episode very, very quick, but let me start it off with a little bit of the hoopla that's happening here at the Gartner event. One of the biggest security stories from this week's Gartner uh, event was a keynote that involved Google's Eric Schmidt. During the event, one of the Gartner analysts talked about the security issues with Android, to which point uh, Eric immediately responded by saying that Android is the most secure platform, more secure than iPhones. And this caused a little bit of audience laughter, and of course generated a bunch of news stories. Now to talk about this a bit, I want to say that I actually don't think any mobile platform is technically more secure than another one. They all have vulnerabilities. iPhone and iOS has had vulnerabilities before, that's why you're able to jailbreak it, and Android has certainly had vulnerabilities before as well. Also, both these mobile platforms have security policies that you can enable as users, good security policies that can certainly help you. But that said, I do think that right now Android is the more dangerous platform to own, not because it's technically less secure than iOS, but because more attackers are focusing on it. Right now, the majority of mobile malware targets Android devices. It's much more likely you're going to be infected by malware if you do unsafe practices on an Android device than if you do on an iOS device. And it has a little bit to do with Apple's closed garden. So the moral of the story is you need to protect all your mobile platforms, but if you have an Android platform, the number one tip is be very careful what you download. The most common way to get malware on your Android device is to download uh, programs from unsanctioned, non-Google Play marketplaces, and to uh, skip some of the, the permission steps that these uh, applications often ask you about. So be careful what you download on Android devices. So one of the stories I want to cover from the week was early news that a lot of websites for some security vendors got hijacked and many people thought they were hacked and defaced. Sites from a bunch of AV products including Avira and AVG who's actually one of WatchGuard's partners and of course the WhatsApp uh, site also got hijacked by a Palestinian hacker group. Initially a lot of people thought they were actually hijacked because of web application vulnerabilities but that, as it turns out it wasn't actually an attack on these particular security vendors themselves. Rather, it was attack on network solutions, the ISP and DNS solution provider that does DNS or domain name resolution for these sites. The attackers were able to leverage uh, flaws in the password reset mechanism network solution uses for their DNS system to actually redirect the DNS for these popular security sites to other places. So this just goes to show the importance of DNS and this means that our DNS solution providers need to take security uh, seriously because if someone can change DNS resolution they can redirect any site in the world that that particular provider provides DNS for to uh, wherever they want to. Next up I can't fail to mention this week's Microsoft patch day. As you probably know Tuesday was both Microsoft and Adobe's patch day. Microsoft released eight bulletins that fix flaws in internet Internet Explorer, Windows, and uh, Office, and many of the Office packages. So if you don't know about those, go and patch your Microsoft products right away if you can. The most important Microsoft patch was the Internet Explorer cumulative update, which fixed a zero-day vulnerability we've been talking about both in this video and on the WatchGuard Security Center blog for the past few weeks. 
But unbeknownst to us until patch day was there was a second zero day vulnerability which attackers have been exploiting in the wild that this IE patch uh, also fixed. So if you use Internet Explorer, you need to get this IE patch immediately if you haven't already done so on Tuesday. Now Adobe shares patch day and they release some uh, patches as well. However, these patches probably don't affect everyone. One of the updates was for a product called RoboHelp, which helps software or, or uh, any company that wants to create web-based help systems. Uh, anyways, if you do use RoboHelp, it was a pretty serious update, so go get it. And the other update was for Reader, which is usually something that affects everyone. However, this Reader update only was a flaw in Reader 11, which is the latest version of Reader that only Windows 8 users can use, I think. So if you're using Reader 10 or below, you're safe, you're already fine. But if you use Reader 11, you want to go get that patch as well. So the last story I want to cover in this really quick episode is some good news. During the week, we heard rumors that the creator or author of the Black Hole Exploit Kit, a person that goes by the alias Ponch, had been arrested in Russia. Now, at first, no one was sure. This started by a guy from Fox IT, a research, a security research organization, doing a tweet saying that Ponch was arrested. But since then, there's been a significant corroborating evidence. For instance, there's been no updates to the Black Hole Exploit Kit in quite a while. By the way, if you haven't heard of the Black Hole Exploit Kit, this is a kit that's sold on the uh, a Criminal Underground, a web-based exploit kit that has a lot of pre-configured uh, uh, web exploits for Java, Internet Explorer, Firefox, all kinds of different uh, web browsers and web plugins that many people use. And it's very easy for even non-savvy attackers to install on hijacked websites. Once you have this kit up there, it's going to detect the browser and some of the software the victim uses and try to use one of its many vulnerabilities to take over the system. So anyways, it's really good news that this guy has been caught. The Black Hole Exploit Kit is one that's been very prominent for a long time. Now that said, just because this one guy has been caught doesn't mean this problem will go away. In fact, uh, many researchers are already seeing attackers move to some Something called the white hole exploit kit and there's many other ones besides that nonetheless it's it's good to see the good guys sometimes catching some of the bad guys so that's all for this week's very quick episode be sure to check out the WatchGuard security center blog where I post these videos and many other security stories and for this episode I'll also post links to other interesting stories in the extra section of the video blog post if you like you can also follow me on Twitter I'm at secadept or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.